Welcome back all you fragrance fanatics and beauty babes. Fall time is approaching and I am super excited about it. I mean, yes, summer is my favorite time of year, but I'm just, I'm so excited. I'm ready for fall. And one of my favorite notes in perfume, I have several favorite notes, but one of my favorite floral notes in perfumes is tuberose. Love me some tuberose. But there's some tuberose perfumes that I like to wear more in spring and summer. And then there's some tuberose perfumes that are more for, if in my opinion, more of a fall and winter tuberose. So that's what I wanted to go over with you today. All of my fall and winter, more cold weather type of tuberose perfumes. So I will leave the link to where I purchased all these perfumes in the description box below. If any of them are Amazon links, I do get a commission from that. So without further ado, let's get started. The first one we're gonna talk about is Kiss My Name. This one is, if I can get the front of it here. <laughs> this one is gonna be, out of all the, the tuberose perfumes I've smelled, this is the most dominant tuberose and the sweetest, like the sweetest, most intense tuberose I've ever smelled in any perfume. Um, and I love it. I love it. It can be a bit much for me in the heat, but I love it in the cooler months. It is um, uber sweet, creamy, and very honeyed, like distinctly, like I swear I think there's a honey note in here. Um, even though it's not listed, it smells like there's honey in this perfume, very sweet, creamy, a honeyed tuberose. And I just absolutely love this one. The next one we have is the tuberose mystique. This one has a creamy, sweet tuberose, very distinct tuberose in here, as the name suggests, tuberose mystique. Um, but there is, there's a little bit of mystery to this tuberose. And this tuberose is a little green. It, it's still sweet and creamy, but there's a little greenness to this tuberose as well. And I get the vanilla in here, uh, very creamy, sweet. And the myrrh in here is ways, it, th th there's a weight to this perfume. There is a heaviness, a denseness to this perfume because of that myrrh. It makes it very resinous smelling, but there's also this aromatic um, vibe going on throughout the whole perfumes that kind of elevates it so it doesn't get too weighed down. And I just absolutely, like it, this one is very addictive and it is, it has a mysterious quality to it. And then the next one we have is the Charming Tuberose. This one, you've heard me talk about this before. Well, actually all of them before, but this one has a creamy coconut and then the tuberose and the gardenia mixed together become very sweet and creamy white floral. And then you've also got the vanilla in here and it's just, it smells so sweet and creamy and delicious. But then there's also this cinnamon, this little bit of spicy cinnamon that gives us some warmth and sprinkled on top. So it becomes a little warm and it's very, um, it's very edible. It's, it smells like some sort of dessert. I don't know a particular type of dessert, but just something edible, something very sweet and edible. And, and I love it. And I think it's perfect for like more of a fall time uh, because of that cinnamon in there it gives uh, that warm spiciness to it. The tuberose that, um, I think it's perfect for fall going into winter. And then we've also got the Kim Kardashian by Kim Kardashian. <laughs> this one has, um, it has like a very nice, like more, more fresh opening, like, like I'm getting like a fresh citrusy opening, but then as this dries down, you get that creamy tuberose and then as it dries down even more, you get these spices and a little bit of an animalic quality, just a pinch of an animalic quality. So it's like there's this fresh citrus mixed with creamy white floral tuberose. And then on the other side, you got this animalic spiciness, a little darkness and, but it's in one perfume. So it's very, 
you know, good girl and bad girl at the same time. And um, I, I really love this one. And I think, again, because of the spices and that little bit of animal quality, I feel like this one is like perfect for fall time weather. The next one we have is newer to my collection, but I am very excited about it. I love this perfume. This is called Shaharoff Blend by Zemea, Zemea or Zemaya. Um, I love this bottle. And despite the look of it, um, this is not a dupe for Angel Share. And, and you know what? Um, uh, Kamra isn't a dupe for Angel Share either. L like they're in similar bottles, but that doesn't mean they have anything to do with each other. And I think that's the case with this one as well. This has nothing to do with Angel Share. Um, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe like 50%, like just, just the sweetness of it. Maybe, I don't know, but, but they're like, there's no, there's no like alcohol or anything in this one, like with the Angel Share. And it's not super woody like the Angel Share is. So with this one here, it has, um, it's very creamy, sweet tuberose with a touch of green. And it's giving this a very fresh, spicy quality. And then you're also getting an amazingly sweet, creamy amber and vanilla, like blended together in the base. And this is warm, it's cozy, and it just, I think it's perfect for fall time. Oh, it just smells so sweet and creamy and cozy. Mm. And and like I said, there's a it's a fresh spice. There's also a warmth to this. There's a warm spiciness, but but this the greenness and the tuberose is making this like fresh spice thing going on. I don't know if it's that mixed with maybe the nutmeg, not sure. But there's something very fresh about this that keeps it kind of elevated, so it's not so sickly sweet. Um, but yeah, I just, oh, it, it's very addictive. And I definitely, I definitely like this better than Kamra. I, I know there's going to be some people that will ask. I absolutely love this 20 times more than Kamra because for one thing I can smell, I, I believe Kamra, if I'm not mistaken, has a tuberose note in there. But I don't, I don't smell that at all in there. I do smell it in this one. And also this is much sweeter and creamier and much less spicy. The original Kamra is so spicy. It's almost too much for me. Like it gives me heartburn. If I spray too much on me, it will literally give me heartburn. It's so spicy. Um, so it's just, it's, it's a bit too much for me, but this one is dialed down way, way, a lot with the spices. And it's more of like a well blend, like everything in here is so well blended in here. And the, just the fresh spiciness is so nice in here. And, and as far as the Kamra Kawa, which is the dupe for Kamra, um, that is a totally different animal versus this. That Those are two different, totally different perfumes. And, and I like both of them a lot. Um, that one's more of like the fruit cake, um, sweet, creamy, dense fruit cake. Um, this is more, I don't know, it's just not fruit cake-ish. I don't even know if I would consider this very I don't know. Like, I don't know if this is like edible per se. Like, I don't know if I would say this is gourmand. Um, it's not making me think of any particular type of dessert, but it is just very sweet, vanilla, amber, very creamy, with just a touch of spiciness. Mm, it's so good. It is so, so good. And then the last one I want to show you is the Narcissa Rose Musk for her. Uh, this is the dupe for the Narcissa Rodriguez one. And I am absolutely obsessed with this perfume. Obsessed, people, obsessed. Um, it is so sweet and it is purple. I can smell the color purple in here. And I really pick up on that plum a lot. And it is a very ripe, like very ripe, juicy, dark, dark purple plum. And I get the vanilla, and this is a very musky perfume. 
and it's um, it almost kind of has a that steamy quality that some people talk about, like a like coming out of the shower, everything's fresh, and you have like that steam in the bathroom, like that. It kind of has that type of vibe going on in here, very fresh, um, but very dense with that plum at the same time. And it's it, for me, it's too much to wear in the summer heat, uh, just like any of these that I'm talking about. But during the colder months, oh, this is so nice. And and I pick up more of the tuberose in here than I do the rose. Now that's just me personally. Um, some people may not pick up on the tuberose at all. They may get tons of rose in this one. But I, for me, what I'm smelling is mainly tuberose with maybe a little bit of rose in the background. Like she's way out there in left field. Um, mainly get the tuberose and it's it's like a sweet creamy little green uh tuberose mixed with the vanilla and the muskiness and the plum the juicy sweet fruity plum and um it's very sexy but you could also wear this to bed like it's also very like cozy at the same time it's got this cozy element but a sexiness about it at the same time and i just i really love this one so that is all of my fall winter tuberose perfumes. I would love to know, do you have any other recommendations for more of a fall winter tuberose? I, I love tuberose. You know, tell me all of your recommendations. I love talking to you guys in the comment section. So I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you enjoyed the video and thank you so much for watching and remember to seize the day and overspray. Bye guys.